Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. Glad to get your phone calls and your emails at 866-HEY-LARS. That's 866-439-5277. Emails go to talk at LarsLarson.com, and I'll get back to your phone calls and your emails in just a moment. I'm on remote today, so I've got to ask the guys back at the station to punch up the call from Paul Nealon because our computer took a hiccup. Paul, it's good to have you back on the program. Thanks for having me on. Listen, the big day is coming right up, isn't it, when you're going to challenge Paul Ryan and give the voters, at least the voters in the district in Wisconsin, the chance to replace him in the United States Congress. That's exactly right. August 9th is Wisconsin Independence Day. So we've got to make sure that people know why this is important. And I've got to ask you, what kind of help can people around the rest of the country give you, Paul? Uh, that's a great question. couple questions there. So <laughs> to help me, you could go to electnealon.com that's elect n-e-h-l-e-n dot com every five dollars ten dollars fifty dollars uh helps this campaign you know i start sounds like we might have lost the paul dealen call i don't know exactly why that is but we'll see if we can get him back but i think this is important as well because You've got Mike Pence, who is the running mate to Donald Trump, who's endorsing Paul Ryan. And Paul Nealon in Wisconsin is the man running against Ryan in the primary that comes up next Tuesday. This is such a consequential election for the United States of America uh, because it involves the leadership of the House and sending a message that I think, you know, as much as I talk about Democrats on this program, it's important that we remember that sometimes the Republicans need a knock upside the head to get them to pay attention as well. And I thought they were going to start paying attention when Eric Cantor got booted in Virginia and replaced by a really great conservative, Brat, Dave Brat. Uh, but apparently the Republicans were not listening. And I think the evidence that they're, they're still not listening is in the Trump campaign and the reaction to the Trump campaign because you still have people who identify with the mainstream, the, uh, the establishment wing of the Republican Party, who are saying, no, we don't want Trump. Well, you know, it's a little bit late. You don't change horses in the middle of a stream. Uh, even when you decide you don't like Trump, the American public likes Trump. An awful lot of Republican voters turned out specifically to vote for Donald Trump. And the proof of that is that turnout was up almost 60 percent in the primaries for Trump. Turnout for the Democrats was down by about 20 percent. And if you're not paying attention to that as the Republican Party, I think a lot of these folks, guys and gals, who've been used to being in leadership positions in the party, I'm not necessarily talking about Reince Priebus. He may, may or may not fit in this category. But if you have people who are in that position, they get used to having it their way. They say, we will decide who you get to vote for and who you do not get to vote for. Paul Nealon is back on the line with us. Hey, Paul, uh, sorry about the little uh, telephone snafu. I don't know where that happened. No worries. But yeah, I, it's I, on my I, end. I'm, I'm moving right now. Unfortunately, I'm headed to another event. Well, in fact, you probably got a pretty packed schedule between now and Tuesday, don't you? We do. But we love the Lars Larson show. And... Um, you guys have given us plenty of airtime, and you know I listen. We have it on when when I'm when I'm out campaigning. So well, um, that's nice. You know, you, Thank you. You guys support us, and we support you. Yeah, we we uh, we like the what you guys bring. So. Well, listen, I, I got to tell you, we're, we support you because you're right on the issues and we support you. Uh, and I put that first and secondarily, the fact that Paul Ryan has been such a major disappointment to so many conservatives. What would you make of the fact that Mike Pence came out in favor of Paul Ryan? Oh, you know, I'm not completely surprised about that. I don't think anybody should be really. Um, Mike Pence and Paul Ryan are friends. And, you know, it, it would be hard for him to... Uh, not endorse him. I'm sure Paul Ryan is scrambling right now to get anybody to endorse him because, you know, he'd rather run on his endorsements than run on his record. And, you know, that's not that's not the game we're playing here. Uh, and I, I would say uh, kudos to to uh, Mr. Trump for saying, yeah, sure, go go uh, go support your friend. I mean, that doesn't seem out of the bounds of of normalcy to me. Uh, I think he was being very magnanimous and, and saying, Hey, go support your guy. And so, but, but 
I don't think Mr. Trump uh, was suggesting, uh, you know, and and support his policies, support his open border, uh, bad trade deal uh, policies. I think he was saying support your friend, and that's about it. Um, but I, again, nothing is going to change my trajectory here. We are going to keep working hard every day, getting out, getting our message out, letting people know. There absolutely is a change happening here in Wisconsin's first district. We have got a historic opportunity to take back our district from Paul Ryan's corporate special donors. We have an opportunity to stop this country changing amnesty that Paul Ryan said he'd push through. We have a chance to stop this jailbreak legislation that Paul Ryan has already said. He will support the minute he is reelected, and and that will release thousands of dangerous criminals into our into our communities. And Paul Ryan just doesn't get paid enough by Wisconsin voters to vote on our behalf. He absolutely gets paid better by his donors, and therefore, he votes their conscience, not ours. No, and in fact, all this nonsense about sentencing reform, they've even called it mass incarceration. This isn't mass incarceration. We lock people up for committing the crimes that the people and their representatives have decided are against the law in this country. How, how, how much more common sense can you be? And these are the same, you know, they're the same tough sentences that people like Hillary Clinton at one point supported and that Republicans supported because they understood that the victims of crime deserve to have us lock up the people who perpetrated those crimes. Yeah, you know, every, every one of those crimes stands on its own merit. And, and they were adjudicated on their own merit. They, they were never mass anything. You are, you are dead nuts on with that comment. They are, they are just, oh my God, living in a fantasy land that, hey, we should let everybody go because we have too many in. No. Build a wall and throw everybody who doesn't belong in this country on the other side of it who's in our prisons, and make sure we keep them out. And then there'll be plenty of room in our prisons for those who are committing crime. we got to keep them there for their full sentence and teach people a lesson that you do the crime, you're going to do the time. We're not going to reduce the sentence. And if we run out of prison space, guess what? We're going to build more prisons. Hey, Paul. Since you're going to a yeah. bunch of events, let me throw a, a suggestion at you. There's a friend of yeah. mine who's a prosecutor. And his, one of his favorite lines of this gets him, you know, the, it, this really bugs him, is truth in sentencing. Now, we talk, talk about truth in lending. If a lender lies to somebody, yeah. we take him to town. If, a, if a, a company lies about their product, we take them, you know, we, we take them to task for that. Truth in sentencing means if you say this person did a crime and they're getting 20 years, you don't deser decide, you know, 10 or 12 years into it, oh, we're just going to let him go. Because then you've lied not just to the victim of that crime, you've lied to all the people who supported having the law passed in the first place. That kind of deception is not allowed by commercial companies. It's not allowed on an individual basis. If your friends lie to you, you stop being friends with them. And, uh, yeah. and if you lie about what the sentence is, Paul, we're going to direct people to your website. I wish you well. I know you're not going to get much sleep between now and Tuesday, but there are a lot of Americans pulling for you.